everyone. Thanks for joining us here on North Dakota Today. I'm Lisa Bedeau filling in for Christy Larson. And Chris Berg is back in the Good house. Good to see you. Yeah. Happy Tuesday. Yeah. Did you have a nice uh, long weekend? We did. I uh, we ended up moving over the weekend, so that's wow. always a laborious thing. I say that's not fun. I was like, well, <laughs> fun. <laughs> the new house is fun. But moving the strangest is not. thing is, is you know, I had Tuesday and Monday. I mean, excuse me, Friday and Monday, and I feel like I've been gone for two weeks. So if I look at you today, just like a blank stare, just <laughs> just I mean, like go. who are you? Where yeah, am like I? what am I doing here? <laughs> just keep talking, and I'll. Good job, Lisa. Uh, Mudeau, okay. <laughs> it's, it's, you it's must bizarre. have needed it, though. It was I a, guess. A nice I little mean, break. Isn't that funny how sometimes just an extra day or two on the weekend really? I literally, I got here today. I was like, wait, what am I doing? Like, I, can you work that into your I contract still... so you just have four day weekends every, <laughs> every weekend? Wouldn't that be so nice? You guys really need them. You and Lisa Green, everybody getting up mm. at crack of dawn and yeah, well before the crack. We we don't get up early. We get up in the middle of the night. We That's... get up at three. 3 a.m. Right, yeah, right now our director is saying it's lunchtime. Can someone go get us a cheeseburger or something? Yeah. Because people How are eating you? breakfast. And Easter, Easter egg hunts? And it was awesome. We had celebrated at my sister's house in West Fargo. Oh, nice. And I'm still like, oh, we just ate so much. It was awesome. All the candy, oh, still good. eating peeps in my house and chocolate bunnies. Ooh. And so it was awesome. It was, you know, I, I wish it was going to be spring weather. You know, you kind of think we had our Easter dresses all covered up and you know, our big winter coats, and Lisa Green warned us, and we'll talk to her here in just a moment well, I was kind of waiting for you to comment well. on my nice tan from the weekend. Did you get a nice tan here in Fargo? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> Inside your house? No, nobody wanted to be outside at all. It's it terrible. It was amazing, right? Yeah. Are you, sir, are you a peepster? Do you like yeah, peeps? Yeah, I like peeps. Well, oh, I, you do? I do not turn down any candy, though. <laughs> Like, there's nothing I won't eat, it's true. I feel like Christy Larson has, like, called me out on this show when I have not even been watching, and she's like, oh, yeah, I will eat. I eat candy corn, I eat peeps, any nice. of the, the one candy that no one likes from each holiday. <laughs> You'll take one I'll of those? I'll eat it, jelly beans, <laughs> you know, snicker bars, chocolate. Did you do the big Reese's uh, peanut butter egg? Oh, yeah. You did? Yeah, peanut, and actually, my girls are still talking about this. I like to break the ears off chocolate bunnies and dip them in, in, peanut in butter? the peanut butter jar. Oh my goodness. I have a sweet tooth. I can't. I, can't I help could it. do that all day. I won't long. deny it. Oh, yeah. Oh, that is such That's a That's the best, idea. isn't it? Yes. I, I do that with chocolate chips all the time. And just. Everything's better dipped in peanut butter. And it tastes so good at like 10 p.m. That's the problem. Um, coming Our, up, <laughs> lots right? going on on the show. Well, that's true. I mean, I say, for some at reason night, at night, it's just morning. like, oh my goodness, it just tastes so good right now. Right before I go to bed, and then I wake up, I'm like, why did I do that? Uh, coming up on today's show, how meaningful and positive change can make a big difference in behavior to those with autism. And how about those date labels on your food? What do they actually mean? When can you keep them? When should you throw them? Plus, uh, we're also going to have a preview of uh, mm -hmm. Food for Change film that's happening at the Fargo Theater tonight. So a lot of great stuff coming up on the show. Nice. But we were already complaining about it, and Lisa Green's she's tired of the weather, but she's probably tired more of us complaining <laughs> about it. Uh, let's get a check of our Tuesday forecast now. And you were even talking about wind chills earlier. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I have to live in it too, so I'm not happy. And then I have to hear everybody else isn't happy <laughs> either. That's all right. It's fine. You know, we're, we're looking at some uh, some tough weather this morning, and wind chills are pretty low. They are below zero, and visibility is low in some areas. We're taking a look right now, a live look on our Storm Team Skycam network here uh, along the North Dakota, South Dakota line. This is the Dakota Magic Casino view uh, just right along I-29, and you can see the flags whipping in the wind and the snow is coming down again there in that area. So dealing with more snow here in the valley. Not everybody, if this isn't our far southern viewing area, but still it's out there. Uh, some of us again suffering from that snow. Fargo right on the northern edge of this, we might see a few flurries from time to time, but you can see most of the of the uh, snow that's falling and accumulating is along that South Dakota area and south and back over toward Edgeley, seeing some snow there too. and. Again, this is just going to continue for a little while longer here this morning, eventually into the afternoon. At least we're not Minneapolis or Sioux Falls. We're not getting hit by the heavy snow that they are here today. Uh, but if you need to head in that direction, it might be something you'll want to rethink because you're going to be driving into some even worse conditions. And by the way, it has been icy this morning too, if left over from yesterday's snow. So travel is not great even here in the Southern Valley. Winter weather advisory for some of our viewing area, again in the far south and beyond Minneapolis in a winter storm. 
storm warning. And visibility looks okay for most because most of us aren't seeing any snow. But the farther south you go towards Sisseton, you're going to see some drops in visibility there. And our wind speeds are out of the north. We're seeing winds that are gusting into the 20s, especially in those areas where we picked up snow yesterday and we're getting that snow now. So it's kind of that, that double whammy that we're dealing with down by Sisseton and Gwinter. And checking out your temperatures. It's cold. We're at five right now in Devil's Lake, Valley City, Roseau, all at five degrees, eight in Fargo and six in Grand Forks. And here's a look at what the wind is doing to it. It feels like 10 below when you step outside in Fargo and 13 below in Grand Forks. So it's a morning to pretend that we're in the middle of winter because it we feel like we are <laughs> for that matter. Make sure you put on your heavier coat and of course your your snow boots and your winter scarves and, and hats and such. So here's a look at our hourly planner here this morning. We've got those snow showers that are going to just gradually move eastward. Most of us free of that extra snow, but we'll still be on the cold side even into the afternoon. Highs only in the teens to around 20 degrees. That's as warm as we'll get. I am hopeful we'll get those clouds out of here later afternoon so we can at least get some sunshine to brighten things up a little bit. And that sun is strong enough this time of year to do some melting on some of those uh, asphalt surfaces and, and sidewalks here. Uh, so maybe help to work away at a little bit of the ice. Of course, once that sun sets, we're going right back to ice anywhere in the valley where there's standing water because, well, we're below freezing already, but those temperatures will just continue to drop. Already in the single digits by 10 o'clock tonight up by Jamestown and Ellendale. And we're looking at even colder numbers tomorrow to begin the day. So your snowfall potential, zero to one in places like Fergus Falls and down toward oh, around the Havana area. And then a couple of places might get about an inch additional snowfall down around Sisseton and into Traverse and uh, Grant counties. And of course, the farther into the snow you go, the more likely you're to see the heavier snowfall totals. Uh, your seven day planner. I hate to say no hope in sight because <laughs> that just sounds so bad. But right now we're just looking at this stretch to continuing, hanging on. And Wednesday into Thursday, we're going to see some snow. Uh, it should be a fairly light, uh, but on Sunday, another round of significant snow possible. You have to look really far into the very long range models to see some uh, some improvements. And by, by that, I mean, I don't mean a couple of months away. It's it's in another week or two that we'll see some improvement. Basically, second half of, of uh April, we're looking at some more seasonable weather. I joked earlier that it'll be better by June. Yeah, right. right? Oh my goodness. Feels you're like right. It. <laughs> at least there's no, like, usually the seven day, you're like, oh, you yeah. look forward to the. the <laughs> Here's a nice day. Yeah, but, but not so much. We had more relief like in February. I mean, right. remember there was yeah. this 40 degree day here and there? And oh, so I wish February were back. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, the culprit? Is it just some weird jet stream thing from the Arctic? Or? It just depends on the weather pattern. And right now our pattern is set up for us to be on the cold side of the jet. And we need, we need some changes to happen in order for that to start to get moving again. And that doesn't look to be happening for a little while. If so. we made a call for like everybody in the valley and everybody would go to go outside <laughs> and just blow north and blow it north, could we make any impact? You know, <laughs> It might I will start that, right now. <laughs> start that campaign. It might might be one of those situations where doing something, even though it doesn't have an effect, at least it makes you feel better. So That's true. Go That's for true. it. We'll warm ourselves up. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. You bet. We have our final Fargo Force Buffalo Wild Wings four-pack giveaway winner to congratulate. And this morning, Katie, you're the big winner. You're going to receive a one four-pack, which includes four reserve seat tickets to a Fargo <clears> Force <throat> home game. Four vouchers, each good for one small fountain soda, and four vouchers, each good for one small popcorn. You also get a voucher for a free shareable at Buffalo Wild Wings with your purchase. The sponsor, of course, or this contest is sponsored by the Fargo Force. I'm still riding a high. We talked about this last week. You were busy moving, but the Lamaru twins were at the Fargo Force game oh. on Friday night. And I went early. For, I go to a lot of Fargo Force games. It was the first time I've ever been there, like, before the puck drops. <laughs> I'm always late for everything. But uh, we stood in line and got to meet them and autographs and shake their hands and oh, stuff. I brought my awesome. two girls. It was awesome. And then um, Saturday night, it was skate with the force players. So all the young hockey players got to go down and skate on the ice after the game. That's with great. With the force. So it was a, a so really were you out there? fun. I didn't go down there. But our our friends that we went with, their boys, went down and, and skated on the skated ice. Skated around. So and the force are doing fun. pretty well this year, yep, right? Now they're, yeah. 
Yep, I think they're in second place now, but you know, they're going to make the, the playoffs. So, yeah, it's good. It's Something awesome. to, to cheer for. Minnesota Wild are going to make the playoffs. I mean, there's some good things happening sports-wise. So this is a story that you've been covering now for quite some time. So I'm I know. This you... is big news. I did. I asked if we could <clears> talk <throat> about this a little bit. Uh, and you guys had uh, Landon Solberg's mom on, you know, just a couple weeks ago, a week or two before the big fundraiser. But we just found out that uh, Landon Solberg, who you know probably because we've been covering him uh, big time, he's battling brain cancer cancer. They're hoping maybe a cure can be found in Cincinnati. Uh, the aggressive brain tumor uh, typically does not respond well to radiation and chemotherapy. They still did go ahead and tried the intense radiation therapy. They just found out that they've been accepted into a clinical trial at the uh, Cincinnati Children's Hospital. So when I was reading a little bit more and, you know, because he has this certain kind of protein, you know, this terrible brain tumor it actually made him qualify for this. So th there is hope. Um, this is video from a huge assembly they had at Freedom Elementary. He goes to West Fargo, where the whole school, look at that, everyone was wearing the matching T-shirts. Um, just great community support. And, and I was just reading as well that they're starting a, um, a gift card meal train because they're going to be leaving ah. next week to go to Cincinnati. And uh, they're going to be there four or five weeks. You know, and they still, Landon has a sister who's in elementary school and a little baby brother, who, wow. you know, Griffin, who, Griffin and, and Emery. So, you know, it's going to be hard. You got to do whatever you, you can yeah. to, you know, save your child's life. But of course, <clears throat> uh, bringing the family and bringing Landon to Cincinnati for more than a month, um, they're going to need a little bit of help. So uh, you can get more details by going to the Landon's Light Facebook page. We have a story up on valleynewslive.com. They're asking for gift cards to restaurants. Um, in Cincinnati, it's probably an easy Google search. I know they're like, well, they have different restaurants. So I read that they put chili on their spaghetti down there. What restaurant would they? That's Chilis, weird. Right? Cincinnati. Kind of a little, yeah, Ohio Southern uh, thing, maybe. No. But so, uh, anyway, so continued prayers are needed for the Solberg family. And if you can help out with the uh, gift card meal train, that would be awesome as well. But very good news. Giving it a shot, getting yeah. in on a clinical <clears throat> trial. Um, sounds like they have a really great oncology team down there in Cincinnati. So we wish him the very best in the California. Keep the family it, in your it, prayers. I mean, the yeah. mom just was so sweet and you've done such a great job covering Thank the you. story. And it's like, your heart just goes out to him. You can't fathom having that happen to your young son. Like you just said, having two other kids and you're, you just feel like you're trying to keep it all together. And um, just so, keeping your head above water. Yeah. So keep him in your prayers and if you can help out in any way, hopefully Maybe there's a Ronald McDonald house down there they yep. can stay at, which make a big difference. And would you say four to six weeks they're going to be yep. down there? Man, that's a, whew, that's a long time. It is to be away from your home and your, your support circle. <clears throat> uh, this story, too, is like just crazy. I was kind of jumping into this. The California boy who fell into the sewage system. Did you hear about this on Easter Sunday? Uh, it seemed like there was no hope. But after 13 hours of searching, they found him. 13-year-old Jesse Hernandez says he was praying to God to stay alive. Uh, he was playing with his cousins on this structure when he fell in on Easter Sunday. He says the water swept him down the tunnel. Mm. He walked along the edges until he got to a place where he could stand up, and that's where he stayed until he was rescued. Now, this is crazy. <clears throat> if you kind of look in, at the video in there, and this is raw sewage, which is like gross on a whole nother oh. level, but uh, searchers used closed-circuit cameras, and they noticed what appeared to be handprints on one of the walls in there and that that was true that was his handprints and i don't know whether he, he said he was hoping somebody would know that that's the direction he was going um but they did find him he was about a mile from where he had fallen in no yeah and that's where they so after using those cameras and they thought well that must be a science so not you know why would there be handprints in that area they opened a maintenance hatch and found him but after 13 hours My it's just like gosh. one of those like you know, prayers do Miracles. come true. You yeah. know, the dad was like, you know, after so many hours, <clears throat> your brain starts going to places you just don't want it to. Um, and then, you know, happy ending. So, Kudos to the rescue team. Oh, I mean, holy mackerel. For not giving up. It's really, really that incredible. Just unbelievable. All right, stay with us. When we come back, we're going to be talking about uh, benefits to those with autism with certain relationships. Much more.